What's up everyone, in this video I'll show you how to make rotating elements on scroll, but it's probably best you don't use a button or a video because it looks rubbish. So even though this will work on anything, we're going to be a bit more specific than just rotating a button or the whole of Google. Instead we're going to make a simple curve PNG in Photoshop, which we're then going to stick into Squarespace. We'll position it with a bit of CSS and then make it animate on scroll. And later on we'll take a look at positioning and customising it for mobile as well. So starting off in Photoshop, we're going to open a new canvas. And it doesn't need to be too big, so we'll make it 750 by 750 pixels with a transparent background. Let's just zoom in on the canvas. Okay, I'm going to grab the ellipse tool. And we want to set this to path. And then while I'm holding shift, we'll draw out the circle. Holding shift keeps the circle perfectly round. If we didn't do this, we'd just end up with a big blob. Now at this point, it doesn't matter if it's not right in the middle. We'll sort that out in a sec. So next we'll grab the horizontal type tool and back on the canvas if you look closely when we hover over the path the cursor changes from having a circle around it to having a wavy line. So we'll click on the path and then you can change this to whatever you want but I'm just going to leave it as it is. Let's up the font size, 40 should be enough. And we'll set it to all caps to make it look more even when it's rotating in Squarespace. I'm just going to fill this up with a bit more text. And if you find like mine your text clipping off the canvas, then we'll grab the move tool and then press command T. And then while we're not holding shift this time, we can drag this in a bit and then press return. And then the last thing to do is make sure it's centered. So again, making sure the move tool is selected, we'll go select all or command A. And in the alignment bit at the top, we'll go middle and middle and command D to deselect. And that's it. So we'll go to file, export, quick export as PNG and name it whatever you want and save. Okay, now we'll jump into Squarespace, position the PNG and then set up the animation. Rotation, rotation, ooh. So I'll add an image block. Now it doesn't matter where you drop this because we're gonna override its position anyway. And then we'll add the image. We'll turn the caption off. And if you want it to be a link, you can set that up here too. And then save. Okay, now we'll put a bit of CSS in to get this in a better place. So we'll head over to the CSS editor. And we need to get the idea of this image block. If you've seen any of my videos in the past, you'll have seen me using Squarespace block identifier for Chrome, which stopped working for me the other day. So I'll leave a link to a new one down in the description. So we'll open up the block identifier and then I'll click on the ID to take a copy and then we'll close this down. And then we'll paste it into the CSS editor. And then we'll put some curly brackets and then first I'm going to set the size. So I'll go width colon 5VW semicolon. VW refers to the viewport width. You can make this bigger or smaller if you want. Next I want to make sure this doesn't get buried behind anything else. So we'll go Z hyphen index colon and 10 should do it and then semicolon. Then position colon fixed semicolon and it might disappear at this point but it might just no it doesn't matter. So next is to decide where you want to put it. I'm going to position mine in the bottom left corner but don't worry I'll explain how to move it around. So I'll go left colon 1% semicolon and then bottom colon 1% semicolon. And it should appear in the bottom left corner and when we scroll it should stay exactly where it is. So if you want to move it to the bottom right, we'll just change left to right. Same if you want to move it to the top, we'll change bottom to top. And if you want to move it out a bit further, we can change these percentages as well. And then one last thing we need to do is remove all of the patterns. So we'll go pattern colon zero semicolon. Okay, we're done with all the board and CSS bit now. Now we can set up the rotation with a little bit of script that you'll find in the pinned comment below. Once you've taken a copy of the script, we'll head over to the site-wide code injection under settings, advanced and code injection. And we'll paste it into the header. All we need to do now is get the idea of the image block again. So we can use the block identifier again or grab it from the CSS. And in the script, we'll replace block ID 
with our block ID and save. And that is it, except it isn't because if we scale down to mobile view, you'll see that we can barely even see it. And also it's got this sort of sideways movement going on as well. So what we need to do is separate the desktop CSS from the mobile CSS. To do that, we're going to use media queries. So we'll come back to the CSS editor. And underneath our CSS, we'll put at media only screen and normal brackets. Between the brackets, we'll put max hyphen width colon 660px. Come outside of the brackets and leave a space and then a couple of curly brackets. Let's make a bit of space between these. And then I'm going to take a copy of everything we've put in above and paste it between the curly brackets in the media query. Then we can remove these few lines, leaving just the width and pattern. Now any changes we make to this CSS will only affect the mobile or devices with a screen width of 660 pixels. So we can up the size, let's try 15 VW. Maybe a bit small actually, let's go 25. That's better. But you can see when we scroll, we're still getting a bit, well, a lot actually of sideways movement. So this is where the pattern comes into it again. To fix this, it's gonna take a bit of trial and error. So we're gonna up the pattern. Let's try 10px to start and scroll. Nah, it's not enough. Let's try 20. That may be slightly too much. Let's go with 17. There we go, spot on. So as always, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, leave us a thumbs up below. If you're not already, consider subscribing to see more stuff like this. And hopefully, I will see you in the next one. See ya.